Hi friends, looking to replace sugar? In this video, we are doing a deep dive into the top 10 anti-inflammatory sugar replacements. You'll be surprised how these sugary subs can help you improve your blood sugars and insulin levels. Sugar is one of the most unique ingredients in food and one of the most confusing. There are several names for sugar and they often end with OS, O-S-E. But sometimes the foods use other words on their labels such as inverted sugar, syrup, honey, molasses, and juice. Even worse, sometimes it's not even nutritious, but it's in your food like sugar alcohols or high intensity sweeteners. I'm going to show you how to make your life simple, sweet, and anti-inflammatory by eating these 10 sweet foods. Number one is the world's number one fruit, and that is the grape. It's so sweet, and that's why it's a great sugar replacement. It's more nutritious than table sugar. One cup of table sugar which has a glycemic index of 65, which is still lower than a slice of bread. That's how high that food is gonna raise your blood sugar. This means eating white bread or anything made of white flour is worse for your blood sugar control than actually eating table sugar. If you have blood sugar issues, grapes will still raise your blood sugars, which happens to everyone. That's natural, that's actually fine. But I'll tell you how to eat these sugary foods and improve your insulin sensitivity a little later. First, let's talk about why the right grapes are so good for your health. Not all grapes are equal. Do you like the seedless kind? Did you know that the seeds are very nutritious and they contain essential nutrients like vitamin E and omega-3 fatty acid called linoleic acid? In addition, grape seeds hold 64% of the grape's phytonutrients called flavonoids and OPCs or oligomeric proanthocyanidins like resveratrol considered by many to be a longevity molecule. Heard of resveratrol supplements? Do they really work? I don't think so. I just enjoy grapes. Have you tried it frozen? Sometimes I cut them up and use them as a sweet topping. Remember grapes, fresh or frozen, can be a choking hazard, so you have to be careful when you're serving them to small children. When my kids were little, I would give them a serving of grape juice as a laxative when they were constipated. Now, as a parent, I don't like using any medications for my children. Did you know that some laxatives are actually stimulants like castor oil, senna, and biscotol? They all can make you dependent on them to have on a daily basis in order to get a bowel movement. That's actually not a good thing. Other laxatives are designed to bulk up your stool like selenium husk and methyl cellulose, but they can make constipation worse, especially if you are dehydrated. When your diet is healthy for your body, you're not going to need a laxative. Eating the right foods like grapes have far more benefits than just helping you poop. If you drink Concord grape juice over 16 weeks, it's actually been shown to help older folks with mild cognitive impairment improve their memory. No over-the-counter laxative can do that. Drinking grape juice actually was tested in the driving performance of moms with preteens and the moms drove better. Now, I'm not sure why they didn't give it to the teens learning to drive. As a mom who has trained two teenagers to drive, I think the driver in training needs grape juice more than the trainer, which probably wants a different version of processed grapes. Maybe the DMV should give people a bag of grapes along with driving permits. This study used PET scan images of the brains of people with dementia. Their progression of dementia actually slowed on the PET scan after eating grapes for six months. In America, we just think grapes are delicious fruits to add to baked goods, salads, oatmeal, but it's actually an ancient plant used medicinally for at least 6,000 BC in Egypt and Greece. No part of the plant was wasted. European folk healers made an ointment from the sap of grapevines to heal skin and eye diseases. Have you ever tried stuffed grape leaves or dolmas? They are delicious to eat. Grape leaves were used to stop bleeding, inflammation, and pain from hemorrhoids. The actual grapes only taste sweet because we like to eat them ripen, but an unripened grape is more sour than sweet and was used to treat sore throats. Sweet grapes were believed to help a range of health problems from infections like cholera, smallpox, and eye infections to kidney, liver, and skin diseases. This study showed how grapeseed extract ointment 
actually cut the wound healing time in half compared with placebo. These people just didn't volunteer to get cut. They actually had moles and skin tags removed. Did you know that grape seeds are antibacterial with activity against common skin pathogens like Staphylococcus epidermis and Staphylococcus aureus, including a few strains of MRSA, methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. These are very common causes of skin infections. The beauty of grapeseed extracts is that the ingredients aren't similar to prescription antibiotics so that I don't have to worry about drug resistance developing against the few remaining effective prescription antibiotics that I have in my tool chest. In addition, grape seeds are rich in antioxidants that are thought to speed wound healing and prevent scarring. They also appear to help regenerate damaged blood vessels, which get damaged when you have an injury. Topical grapeseed extracts were even tested post C-section, but it seems like the exact dose still needs to be worked out. Now, most physicians were still worried about heart disease because it is the number one killer in the country due to atherosclerosis. So if you are on a cholesterol medication or diabetes medication or high blood pressure medication, you're on them because they're trying to stop atherosclerosis or plaques in your arteries. Now, this study gave people grape seed extracts to eat, and they followed these people for over two years, monitoring their plaques in their neck vessels called the carotid artery. Plaques are like pimples in the artery walls that reduce blood flow when they grow. And when the pimple pops, well, there is just a giant mess that actually will cause a sig alert or no flow. And when you have no blood flow, if the end of that flow is your heart, then you're going to have a heart attack. If the end is your brain, you're going to have a stroke. People taking the grape seed extract actually had less plaques compared to lifestyle intervention on ultrasound imaging. The problem is I couldn't figure out what lifestyle intervention they were doing. I mean, were they eating bacon or were they eating less bacon or were they eating a whole food plant-based diet? And would eating grape seeds give you the same benefits? Unfortunately, they're hard to find unless you shop at an Asian supermarket. Now, big business, we're always trying to purify one ingredient, right? To make billions of dollars, just like discovering aspirin from the willow tree. Unfortunately, that's just not how the body works and why our lifespan is shortening despite spending trillions of dollars on medication and healthcare. Now, still, there may be some benefit, but really, which molecule is it? There are so many polyphenols and OCPs, including resveratrol, that are considered to be powerful antioxidants, neuroprotective and cardioprotective. So here's a summary of the effects of resveratrol, which interact with the body in so many ways. A famous Harvard professor thinks resveratrol is a longevity molecule. However, taking resveratrol supplements, it doesn't appear to be helpful in humans. And that's probably because we have yet to discover coal molecules that may be helping resveratrol do its job. Sort of like the story with vitamin D and magnesium. Now, if you're worried about your sugar metabolism, you need to pay attention to both your vitamin D and magnesium levels. Low vitamin D levels may contribute to insulin resistance. And in case you didn't know, you have to have adequate levels of magnesium in order to get adequate levels of active vitamin D. 45% of Americans are inadequate in magnesium, which is involved in over 300 biochemical reactions in the human body, including the metabolism to make active vitamin D. Do you see how a single essential nutrient is actually dependent upon another essential nutrient and missing one can affect another? And when you take vitamin D3 or cholecalciferol as a supplement, it's not going to help you unless several enzymes at work in your liver and kidneys can make it into the active form, 125-hydroxy vitamin D. All of these enzymes need magnesium to work. So if you aren't eating an adequate supply of magnesium in your food, which is primarily found in dark leafy greens, nuts, and seeds, or if you're not taking an adequate amount of a magnesium supplement, then you're going to struggle with raising your vitamin D levels. Check with your doctor to check your vitamin D and magnesium levels annually. It's very easy to have inadequate and frankly deficient vitamin D levels. Now, if you have kidney issues, you have to be careful with magnesium supplements. That's why seeing a medical doctor to tailor your needs is always best. When you may think you don't need vitamin D supplements because you live in a sunny place. Well, take a look at this list. If you have any of these conditions, you may still be vitamin D deficient. I was... And I didn't even have any of those risk factors. And I live in sunny Southern California. But I was trained to avoid the sun, afraid of skin cancer and moles. And I would always apply sunblock or wear some kind of sun protective clothing. But really, 
the culprit was really being cooped up indoors. Does this sound like your life? So it's not surprising to me that 70% of Americans are either deficient or inadequate. I didn't get enough sunlight as a medical student and medical resident. That was essentially nine years of my life living in the hospital day in and day out. I don't even think I saw the sun in the hospital. I don't think my hospital had any windows. Now, when I finally emerged, I had a vitamin D level that was single digit. That's really, really bad. My dad, he had undetectable levels of vitamin D, which resulted in a spinal fracture. He essentially had osteomalacia or soft bones. He spent his retirement years mostly indoors, and he thought the little gardening work that he did was enough sunlight. Have you ever heard of the term rickets? That was a disease many English children in the 17th century suffered from, and they were cured by the discovery of cod liver oil in 1650. But it really wasn't until after World War I that people proved that the lack of sunlight caused rickets, and that's because they induced rickets in rats kept indoors. That was over 100 years ago, and yet one in a thousand people still get osteomalacia, which is an entirely preventable disease. So do you see how understanding the history of nutrition is super useful for you? We don't need to be spending millions of dollars repeating the same studies and instead just spend a few pennies a day replacing vitamin D. Unfortunately, my dad, he never got his levels checked until it was too late. His spinal fracture actually choked off the nerves to his bladder. And his neurosurgeon told me that when they screwed the rod to his spine, his bones were so soft that he didn't know if the rod would hold. That's pretty bad. If you don't have adequate vitamin D, you will have all sorts of problems. And as you can tell, this is quite an extensive list of diseases associated with low vitamin D levels. It's essentially every organ system in your body. Since vitamin D is important for every single cell in your body, there are receptors in every cell. So when you are low, your body's going to struggle to function. And taking a low dose of vitamin D, even if your levels aren't low, was actually shown to be beneficial to reduce autoimmune diseases by 22%. This was a study done by Harvard following 25,000 participants over five years. There is no prescription medication that can do that. I had a super low vitamin D level and got chronic hives, which was in the middle of that list. Women are at higher risk of autoimmune issues, and I learned my lesson and have been supplementing with vitamin D ever since. However, I still want my great polyphenols, which are concentrated in the skin, and especially the seeds of grapes. I don't know about you, but I have a terrible time finding seeded grapes these days. They were so much more common when I was growing up. That's why I take a grape seed extract daily along with my daily vitamin D and magnesium. If you want to know exactly what I take, I have a link in the show notes below. There are over 600 varieties of grapes. 72 million tons of it is grown around the world. There are three ways people eat grapes. They eat them fresh, they eat them dried, such as raisins, or they eat them fermented, such as wine. I'm not a fan of wine because that alcohol basically washes away any of the benefits of the polyphenols. In addition, alcohol is actually quite toxic to the skin. And after you absorb it, it's toxic to your liver as well as to your brain. Some people drink it for their cardiac health. Well, really, are you willing to put your liver and brain on the line to do it? And I don't think it's all that great for the heart either because it can cause cardiomyopathy. Prove it to yourself. Check your liver enzymes the day you drink and the day after you drink. If it's elevated, you know that's a toxin. Now, wouldn't it be nice if we had a simple blood test to look at the effects of your brain after you drink alcohol? There isn't a blood test but they can scan your brain and see what happens to different parts of your brain. The only problem is that these changes, they can leave some permanent scarring. Just like when you cut your skin, you know, new tissue doesn't grow back like the original and scar tissue in the brain doesn't work the same as the original brain tissue. Now, all these things, they simply reduce your decision-making capacity and the end result leads to dementia. My mom had dementia, so I try to do everything I can so that my kids don't have to go through the same journey that I did with this devastating disease. This is why everything I eat helps my brain. And really, how many of you want to see a doctor with declining brain capacity? What about a nurse that is pushing that intravenous drug that could potentially have major side effects? How about your pilot flying your plane? Or how about your bus driver driving your child or the Uber driver or even the driver following in the car behind you? Do you really want any of them to have declining decision-making capacity? I mean, even if you work for Amazon or your mailman or a UPS driver, 
Now, do we really don't want those people to have maximum brain capacity? How about the Pentagon and the people running our government? You don't have to be drunk to make poor decisions that can impact someone else's life. Personally, I want everybody to have maximum brain capacity. And honestly, I think we should expect everyone to take care of themselves so that they can take care of others. But, you know, we can't change the world, but we can change ourselves and we can choose to take care of ourselves. And hopefully we can be examples for other people to follow. That's why I eat grapes and I encourage you to go get some red grapes. My favorite way to eat grapes is fresh. Now I used to peel the skin. That's a bad idea because 30% of the phytonutrients, they are in the skin. The other 60 to 70% are in the seeds. Eat the seeds. I choose to eat the tiniest seeded grapes with the darkest skin. So the big jumbo seedless grapes, they are less nutritious, but they're still delicious and super sweet. Now, sure, your blood sugars will increase when you eat grapes, but I'm going to tell you how to start reversing that problem in just a few days so you don't have to miss out on these wonderful, delicious sweets. How about your breakfast? Do you eat oatmeal? Do you add sugar to your oatmeal? Well, have you ever tried adding Golgi berries? That's number two. They are about the size of a raisin and a brilliant salmon red, and they look like this. The taste is hard to describe, but they are my favorite to add to grains. I know lots of people who drink coffee, but they add a ton of sugar to their coffee. Have you tried maybe adding freeze-dried Golgi powder instead? One teaspoon has one gram of fiber and four grams of protein in addition to meeting 100% of your vitamin A requirements for the day. It is a great source of potassium as well, which 99% of Americans do not get enough of on a daily basis. Now, if they have cataracts, when you look at their eye, it's cloudy. That's how physicians can diagnose cataracts. Of course, an ophthalmologist can actually detect the smallest amounts of cataracts because they have microscopes. Cataracts is a leading cause of blindness in the world, responsible for 40% of all the cases. The lens is like a magnifying glass in your eyes that's supposed to focus light to the back of your eye called the retina. Now, the back of your eye has a nerve called the optic nerve, and that's a direct connection to your brain. More than half of Americans over 80 have cataracts. And when you get cataracts, your vision will be blurry, hazy, you're gonna have less colorful views, and eventually you're not gonna be able to read or see definition. Now, since only 50% of people get cataracts, this isn't an old person's disease, but a disease that happens when you accumulate toxins. Cataracts can happen in younger people, less than 50. I've seen those cases. Here are the most common reasons people get cataracts. Notice how alcohol is on the list. This list has so many risk factors that you can reduce, like diabetes, being overweight, and being vitamin deficient. And notice how it's not just one vitamin. These vitamins are all important because they help your body reduce oxidative stress through supporting the glutathione redox system, which is the body's most powerful system to reduce oxidative stress. Glutathione is heavily concentrated in the lens. Other antioxidants such as lutein, zeaxanthin, and vitamin C are also required, which are concentrated in Golgi berries. Now together, they reduce toxic compounds like hydrogen peroxide and superoxide and hydroxy radicals that your body naturally makes as a byproduct of daily metabolism. Did you know that glutathione is a tripeptide, which is a tiny short protein made out of three amino acids, glutamate, cysteine, and glycine. The first two need to be bonded together before adding glycine. Unfortunately, now it's just too bad that we're not doing more research to see if dietary changes can prevent cataracts. And that may be because the standard of care is surgery. That is after the fact. Now, cysteine, is rich in garlic, onions, shallots, and capers. And I personally also take a supplement called N-acetylcysteine for other reasons, and hopefully it's gonna help my lens too. Now these nutrients are found in edible plants, and for those who can't get the volume of food necessary, sometimes supplements can be very helpful. N-acetylcysteine, NAC, is the supplement form of cysteine. And topical NAC was actually shown in a couple studies to help prevent the progression of cataracts. I wouldn't advise that you make this on your own because you can actually do a lot of damage if you put contaminated material in your eye. It's really important to avoid toxins that cause cataracts. Even tap water has dangerous germs. 
The sun is also another problem, so wearing sunglasses can reduce the damaging UV rays. And then we have air pollution. You know, it's bad to inhale this, but it's also bad that it covers your eye. Now, how can we avoid air pollution? Well, you can avoid added air pollution that you make when you cook, and that's by opening the windows and ventilating your room when you cook. And of course, avoid going outdoors during a forest fire and roll up your window when you drive on that freeway. Now, why does the lens get blurry? Well, it gets blurry because proteins build up in the lens and they precipitate out due to oxidative stress. Do you understand why you have to have a robust oxidative defense system? Your body has to constantly prevent these proteins from building up. Like heart disease, it takes several decades to get cataracts. The lens is like your skin. It's flexible and throughout your life, you're going to repair new cells. However, unlike your skin where you're kind of shedding your cells, the old cells in the lens, they don't shed and nobody cleans them up. So they just pile up like trash in the middle of your lens. Heard of hyperbaric oxygen therapy? It's a well-established treatment for a decompression sickness that can happen with scuba divers or for people who can't heal their wounds. But some people are now trying to do it for longevity. Unfortunately, it's associated with a higher risk of cataracts. So too much of a good thing isn't necessarily good for the body. And that is especially true for oxygen. So if you don't need it, you don't want extra. However, a serving of Golgi berries, that contains several nutrients that we need and can help protect the eye, especially the macula, which is the critical part of your eye that allows you to focus. Now, when we look in the back of your eye, we can see the optic nerve. And that, again, is the direct extension of your brain. Well, to find the macula, we just look a little bit below the octave nerve, and then we ask you to look at the light. The Golgi berry is traditionally used in Asia in soups and herbal teas. In this study, two tablespoons eaten in 90 days, about just 15 berries a day, increased a pigment called zeaxanthin in the macula and prevented the buildup of soft drusen associated with age-related macular degeneration. That basically says it improves macular degeneration. As a bonus, in 45 days, you may drop some abdominal fat, LDL cholesterol, and triglycerides, as seen in this study. There are several types of carotenoids, like lutein and zeaxanthin. Carotenoids, they're basically essential for our life, especially for your brain for your immune system and for cellular growth. Now, because your brain is full of fat, it is most easily oxidized. Think about which food spoils faster, your cereal, maybe protein bars, or pure fat. Fatty foods are most easily oxidized, like nuts and seeds, like your potato chips that you leave out in the open. They just never last. That means it goes rancid faster than other micronutrients. And that's why I store my nuts in the refrigerator. Processed fatty foods, have even shorter half-lives. And that's why your potato chip doesn't last very long, even if you didn't eat it. The only exception is when you're eating processed foods with trans fats, which last abnormally long like a Twinkie. Avoid trans fats as they are toxic since your body can't clear it. I ate those old Twinkies as a kid. The new ones, they don't have trans fat, but they're still not good for your health. People with higher blood levels of carotenoids have a lower risk of heart disease improved triglyceride cholesterol, and then they also have improved blood sugars and smaller waist. Now really, the same basic chemical reactions happen in all your cells to keep your entire body healthy. And remember, you came from one cell in your mom's womb, and that cell just kept dividing and specializing. Isn't that just incredible? Carotenoids are primarily found in plants. It's that yellow-orange pigment that you see in a kabocha squash or carrot. Beta-carotene is a carotenoid that can become vitamin A. And 45% of Americans have inadequate intakes of vitamin A even when they supplement. Now, they probably don't realize how important vitamin A is. We literally give intravenous vitamin A as a treatment for active measles. Vitamin A regulates inflammation, as well as your immune system, especially the generals of your white blood cells called the T-cells. Now, if you have a teenager, your teenager may have taken retinoids, a form of vitamin A to get rid of their acne. Here's a list of side effects. Did you know that you can't donate blood for a month after you stop taking it? This is because if a pregnant woman receives your blood, the baby can have serious birth defects. Don't get pregnant within a month of the last day you took the drug. With this list of side effects, wouldn't you rather try food like barberries for acne that was shown to work in this study? It's interesting how Persians and Asians have eaten barberries for thousands of years and it's coveted for its medicinal value, 
But Americans, they think of it as a pretty ornamental plant or an invasive weed. Ultimately, what you choose to eat or take will affect your body in multiple ways. And this is why it's super important to have adequate levels of micronutrients to fight off whatever stressors comes your way. In America, you are at risk of having micronutrient deficiencies and inadequacies. Could it be we have less nutrients in our food? That's probably part of it. But the contrast between deficiency and inadequacy is like the difference between having an established illness or being on the journey towards developing one. The latter means you can reverse course and prevent disease. Are you a soup person? Soups are so much better with an umami flavor ingredient. Have you ever tried adding some persimmons, which is number three? Persimmons will add a sweet umami flavor. Persimmons was my dad's favorite fruit. It's another ancient fruit from China that has been eaten for thousands of years, and it has a honey-like flavor when you eat it ripe. There are hundreds of varieties. Now, the trick is to find the right persimmons to eat. And when you go to the store, there are two main kinds, one that has a flat bottom and one that has a pointy bottom. Now, the flat bottom, you can eat that crunchy, but the pointy ones, they have a lot of tannins when they're not ripe. And that means it's going to taste astringent when you eat them unripe and leave a nasty film in your mouth. The flat bottom persimmons can be eaten fresh, dried, or cooked, and they're commonly used in jellies and drinks and pies, curries, and Puddings. Did you know that one persimmon has six grams of fiber and it's also rich in beta carotene? The diet wars are all about changing your ratios of protein, carbohydrates, and fats. But the real solution of health is getting enough foods rich in micronutrients or nutrient dense foods. That's why we should all be eating more colorful plants like goji berries, barberries, and persimmons. I can't emphasize enough the power of eating adequate amounts of colorful plants because I see so many people with skin conditions that lead to serious life-threatening loss of limb, loss of organs, or loss of life. When you are low on an essential micronutrient like vitamin A, besides dry skin, you can have a leaky gut, you can have diarrhea, chronic coughing, dry eyes, cataracts, and kidney stone. Now, we can actually measure these nutrients in your blood as well as your eye. And people who have higher lutein and zeaxanthin levels have healthier brains. Now this is eating real food. You have to be careful when you're taking supplements because mega dosing vitamin A can be quite toxic. All fat soluble vitamins can build up in your body. When you eat whole plants to get your micronutrients, you don't have to worry about getting toxic levels because nature has it all programmed to make sure you stop eating. And that is the power of fiber. You're only gonna eat so much fiber before you are full. Now besides benefiting your brain, High intake of flavanols is associated with fewer heart-related deaths. That's an added bonus since heart disease is still the number one killer. And if you're worried about your heart, please be mindful and avoid excessive desserts. I love desserts. I see desserts all day long in the form of candy, cookies, cakes. And that was really why I was overweight as a child. Snickers, that used to be a candy my mom would buy. And unfortunately, she would just leave them out. The problem is when you leave things out, you're encouraging people to eat them. It's so convenient. It's easy access. So if you don't want to eat something, hide it from yourself. Put it away. Make it more difficult to reach. And just by doing that, you can actually reduce your intake by two-thirds. Now, instead of junk food, leave some dry fruits without added sugar or real fruits. You can even try leaving some dates, which is number four. Try mixing a couple of cadbury dates with ground peanut butter mixed with cocoa powder and then you roll the whole thing in roasted sunflower seeds or roasted peanuts. That will taste like a fudgy truffle. Freeze it and let me know what you think. Now, I used to hate dates because they are so overpoweringly sweet. However, dates are one of the healthiest sweeteners. Did you know that if you eat dates, you can actually increase the growth of beneficial gut microbes and your stool will have less genotoxic compounds like ammonia. These compounds damage DNA. And when you have damaged DNA, that increases your cancer risk. Now, colon cancer is on the rise. Wouldn't it be great if dates could help? I like that date roll because it has a chewier texture. And that's why I love Logan's. Have you tried Logan's, which is number five? Logan is in the same family as lychees and has a nickname Dragon's Eye. The flesh of the Logan resembles a chewy grape, but it has a rich fruit punch flavor. I usually buy fresh ones from the Asian store. 
You can also buy dry ones. Logan's are rich in vitamin C, fiber, and antioxidants. I grew up eating Logan's, not realizing they were actually thought of as an herb in Chinese medicine. They are used to help calm the spirit, boost memory, and immunity. Now, unfortunately, there aren't any published studies about this topic, but you know, just because we haven't studied it doesn't mean it doesn't work. Traditional Chinese medicine has been practiced for thousands of years. And Western medicine is just beginning to figure out some of these mechanisms for why traditional Chinese medicine works. Unfortunately, Logan is actually quite expensive and unpopular here in the States. I eat them simply because they taste great and they satisfy my sweet tooth. It adds a nice flavor to sweet grains like oatmeal or sweet beans that are popular in Asian desserts. Number six is a Logan relative, lychee. I love lychee flavored anything. It's super sweet and has a unique tropical fruit punch flavor too. The fruit is softer than Logan and it also is rich in vitamin C, fiber, and antioxidants. Now the problem is that so many lychee flavored foods have a ton of added sugar. Canned lychee is soaked in heavy syrup. I don't know why they do that. The real fruit already tastes pretty sweet without any added sugar and it's great on shaved ice or made into jellies, jams, jello, and cakes. Although none of these things are actually a great way to get metabolically healthy and it's gonna make it hard to lose weight. That's why I just stick to eating whole fruit. Did you know that unripe lychees actually can reduce your blood sugar by inhibiting your liver's ability to make sugar? It's like a hospital's backup generator. It's not good when the backup fails as long as the primary electricity fails. And no matter what diet you eat, the job of the liver is to make glucose when you don't eat. Without a normal glucose level 24-7, you can actually have seizures. And if you go to sleep, you may never wake up. Lychees contain a compound called methylene cyclopropyl glycine, also known as hypoglycine, and it's actually a toxin. For most people who eat it, this isn't a problem. But if you're malnourished and a child eating lychee, especially unripened lychee on an empty stomach, that actually can be fatal. Unfortunately, it took thousands of fatalities in children in Vietnam and India to figure this out. Children would have nightmare encephalitis during lychee harvesting time. Kids would stuff themselves on an empty stomach with lychee and then go to bed fine, but they didn't wake up in the morning due to very low blood sugars. Now, at the time, people thought it was an infectious disease. Actually, whenever something goes wrong, people always blame it on an infectious disease. But on the opposite side of the planet, in Jamaica, people would get Jamaica vomiting sickness from eating unripe ackee fruit, which also has hypoglycine. Turns out lychee and ackee fruit, they belong to the same silk berry family of fruits. Now to solve this problem, government just simply taught parents to make sure that kids all went to bed with a full meal and restricted the amount of lychees kids could eat. Now there's also a limit adults should eat as well. That seems to be about 200 lychees or 10 cans of lychee. That's actually a lot of lychee. Heat, by the way, does not remove the hypoglycine. Now I still eat lychee whenever I can get the fruit. It is delicious, but there is just no way I would eat 200 lychees in one sitting, even if it didn't have the toxin. That's just a lot appealing. Number seven is a great sweetener to add to bakery items, which is raisins. Now, I used to make garbanzo bean, chia seed, chocolate carrot raisin cookies, which were spiced up like pumpkin pie. And my toddler, he really liked them. It actually helped me potty train him. The raisins help me make the cookies taste sweeter. And the trick is to pre-soak your raisins before you bake them. Put them in hot water, plump it up, and if you really want it even sweeter, then just blend that raisin with water and use that as a part of your liquid ingredients. Now, many people think eating dry fruit makes them gain weight, but in reality, that doesn't happen unless you're added sugar and oil. Now, some of you have said that you're interested in my recipes. Well, please sign up for my free weekly emails. Now, just a warning, I am not a chef. I think cooking is essentially chemistry experiments, and I just like to make things up. Do you have athletic kids? Or maybe you're an athlete yourself. Have you tried the sports drinks and energy bars? They are not only pretty expensive, but most of them are pretty unhealthy. They have unhealthy artificial ingredients and are loaded with sugar and salt. You should actually just consider eating raisins. They actually work quite well to give you energy, and they're much cheaper. And personally, 
I think raisins are much tastier than any sports drinks, gels, or bars. Now, number eight is a great sweetener for sauces, and that is applesauce. This is an excellent substitute for refined sugar as well as starch. The goal is to eat foods with natural fiber and micronutrients, and applesauce is a great thickener. I love to make this peanut butter applesauce spring roll dip, and here's how you can make it too. The trick is heat up the water to melt the peanut butter. If you're allergic to peanut butter, you can always use another nut butter. Add the spices when it's hot. I like crushed garlic, ginger, white pepper, and green onions. Have you noticed I don't add any sodium salt to any of my foods? Few people realize that sodium actually stimulates your appetite and causes your own body to make an inflammatory molecule called fructose. Now, fructose is worse than glucose in terms of inflammation and worsening metabolism. And many people are concerned that sodium raises blood pressure too. It actually does. The American Heart Association recommends not more than 1,500 milligrams a day of total sodium. And what's worse is that when you eat sodium and then you add the fructose together, they actually elevate your blood pressure even more. Now, if you're eating processed foods like the standard American diet, then your salt intake is off the charts. This affects your body's normal balance of salt regulation. Many don't realize our bodies are designed perfectly for salt regulation. And unless you're sick or you have kidney issues or you're on medication that disturbs this balance, most of us, we don't need to add any more sodium to our diets. Number nine is another great saucy fruit, and that is a plum. A super ripe plum is super watery and delicious. And I really have a hard time using it for sauces because I just love eating them as they are. When they are firmer, they are great to chop up and use with tomatoes to make a sweet salsa without adding any sugar. Try them in your tacos and burritos. They actually add a delicious flavor or add them to grains, beans, or your salad. Here is one of my carotenoid rich antioxidant salsas. The trick is to get your fruit vine ripened or tree ripened and the best bet would be to visit your local farmer's market did you know that increasing your fruit intake can increase your spine mineralization by five percent this beats dairy milk which does not prevent osteoporosis even when you drink it as a teenager however a diet rich in plant-based foods that is rich in vegetables, fruits, beans, and soy can help reduce hip fractures. Bone health is more than just getting your calcium. Your bone is an active organ. It's alive with cells that build bone called osteoblasts and cells that break bones called osteoclasts. The goal is to activate the osteoblasts and to keep the osteoclasts calm and quiet. When the osteoclasts are activated, they use free radicals to destroy your bones. This is called oxidation. This is a very normal process. However, excessive oxidation can lead to excessive bone demineralization. You see how oxidative stress can affect so many parts of your body. So when you eat antioxidants, you are decreasing inflammation that is happening in your bones by inhibiting the osteoclast. It's been shown that women with osteoporosis, they have lower levels of natural antioxidants. And remember how I had mentioned that people just aren't eating enough micronutrients. You don't have to be like those people. And simply by eating your micronutrients, that means eating micronutrient-dense foods like dried plums or prunes, you are nourishing your body with some of the highest amount of antioxidants. Eating a dozen dried prunes a day after three months produced a higher enzyme marker for bone formation compared to eating dried apples. Now, most of what I've been talking about are using whole foods as a sugar substitute for recipes. Sugar really isn't a food. It's a food additive. And really, each ingredient in your processed food should be able to be eaten Separately, you can't do that with 99% of the breads or pastas or crackers or cookies. But I understand it's hard to give those foods up. So if you're looking for a powdered sugar substitute, then how about date powder? This is number 10. It looks like sugar granules and is really a dry powder that you can add to your coffee or baked goods. I made these chocolate pancakes with date powder. The base was whole wheat whole rye, and garbanzo bean flour with added hemp seeds, 
sunflower seeds, and pumpkin seeds, and cocoa powder. And guess what I use to make it rise? Sparkling water. I usually try not to eat powder foods, but my kids, they still like to eat them. So I'm looking for healthier substitutes and date powder is so much healthier than table sugar because it's made out of whole fruit. It also has fiber and it comes with micronutrients. Did you know that dates can help reduce the duration of labor? I wish I had known that with my first child. I was in labor for 18 hours. Now I promise I would tell you how to get your blood sugar and insulin level better and healthier. And that is to really reduce your calories from saturated fat. Now, no one just eats saturated fat on its own. You're going to eat it in food. And so foods with excess saturated fat, they actually turn off your sugar and fat metabolism. And this is why Walter Kepner successfully put obese patients on a low fat rice diet to help them lose weight. But don't do that diet. It needs to be medically supervised since it's radically micronutrient deficient. In the old days, before insulin was invented, eating a high fat diet was how diabetes was treated. After insulin was available, patients with type 1 diabetes were advised to eat a low fat diet to get their insulin levels down. And this may be partially why eating red meat, a high saturated fat food, is associated with a higher risk of diabetes. Now, I know this is all confusing and it goes against what a lot of influencers are telling you, but I hope this next video will help you understand your body better.